We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode one, the pilot episode of The Kate and Abby Show. We're super, super stoked to be here, to be able to be chatting with you guys today. So this is the first episode. I think we started off with talking a little bit about respectively ourselves and why we decided to do this in the first place because you guys have a big part in that why we chose to do that so i'll let abby kick it off because a lot of you guys are coming from abby's youtube channel writer's life wednesdays i hope so yeah i hope so. i mean i was talking about it quite a bit on the channel because i was super excited about it i still am super excited about it it's very exciting to finally be here filming the first episode recording it recording it and filming it if you're watching on youtube right now which is worth noting like yeah if, if you're listening to this there is a uh it's a video version on my YouTube channel. Yeah, so go to Kate's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash K-A Emmons. If you're not already there, subscribe, watch all her videos. They're amazing. And watch the um, the podcast on video format. Otherwise, if you're on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those channels, then you are most welcome to just listen as well. <laughs> we are super glad that you're here. And yeah, so all of you probably know me and Kate, or at least a little bit of our backstory, for lack of a better word. Uh, what we do is... We all know Abby loves to talk about backstory. <laughs> I love backstory, especially a tragic backstory <laughs> for characters, that is. Um, so you know that we're writers, we're creatives, we're entrepreneurs, we're indie authors, we're sisters. And that was kind of a discussion that came up between us when we started doing the podcast or talking about doing the podcast is how unique and interesting it is that we're sisters doing this and i know a lot of people who do podcasts they do like you know co-hosted shows and they're like just friends or business partners which is cool but i feel like it's extremely rare to find siblings doing it especially like sisters who are both writers and both creatives and Entrepreneurs, So I feel like that's kind of a cool element, kind of a unique thing we've got going. And um, yeah, it's exciting to be here. What are, what are your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts are basically the same. I was just going to chime in to say that I, I do think it's kind of a rare and interesting thing that we had the upbringing that we did, which was very different yeah. and holistic. And because of that, we became, we're super close knit. We've always been close knit since Abby was born. I was going to say since I was born, but I'm like, Abby wasn't there yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> since Abby was born, we've been super close. We were writing as kids, like yeah. 10 years old. I was writing a, a, a mystery series, and Abby was sitting there writing with me. So we've always been really close. We've always been talking about creative things. And then as we grew up and started exploring, like, what do we want to do with our lives from a um, standpoint of what we want to do for a living, we have, our parents are both entrepreneurs. So that was a heavy influence in our lives. Yeah. The fact that entrepreneurship was uh, not only possible, but you can really take your dream and form it into a career. And for, for, sure. for me, and I think for you too, um, in even more extensive ways, um, potentially, my dream was to write stories and publish them. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to do that because of our background, because of how we were raised. And I think that's kind of, we both just always bounced ideas off each other. Uh, when Abby started writing and getting into writing more, and she decided, you know, hey, I want to publish books too. It just became like this big cycle of like getting creative, writing what we wanted to write and realizing like, hey, it's totally possible to make a business out of what you love doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, it's so cool. And it's great to be on this journey. It's awesome. And it's awesome to be talking about it more because I feel like yeah. you know, there's only really a handful. It's growing. It's growing to be more people. But there's really not that many people talking about that and talking about being an entrepreneur and being your own boss and publishing your own books and 
doing your life your own way, you doing you. And I feel like that's going to be kind of a cool element that we're going to bring to the podcast. We're going to talk about that quite a bit and being a creative and being a writer and stories and just so much good stuff, healthy living, healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of cool stuff that's going to benefit you guys a lot. And we want you to join in, to join in the discussion as well and um, comment on the show, comment on the YouTube channel and on the podcast on the various channels and just join in the discussion with us as we unpack these interesting topics. Right. So, um, yeah, do you have any more initial thoughts on the, like, the intro thoughts? Or do you want to dive into My, today's topic? I, I do want to dive into today's topic. My last intro thought was going to be, like, you may have seen a little teaser we put up on my YouTube channel, but we talked a little bit about, like you mentioned, healthy living. Mm-hmm. And um, we are huge believers in that your habits and what you do every day so affect your creativity. You have to be curating your life. And I love using that word because it means to carefully, mindfully um, go about your day in such a way that's going to inspire you to be creative. I think a lot of times we run into like, oh, I have writer's block. Oh, I don't feel creative. I've heard that so many times. And the thing is, we're all creative beings, but we have to learn how to take care of ourselves and take and look after ourselves in such a way that promotes and inspires us to act out of our creative nature. And that's where I think all great ideas and books and stories and films are born from that place. So that's yeah. that's our collective goal. That's what we're going to be talking about a lot here, as well as getting into more of the nitty gritty of storytelling. But yeah. this is a podcast for all creatives, storytellers or otherwise, because the truth is we're all storytellers telling our stories in different mediums. I mean, am I right? Exactly. Exactly. That's That's art. But so today uh, we decided, me and Abby unanimously decided that our first episode, with that being said, healthy habits and stuff, we're going to talk today about digital minimalism, which is a, a kind of a little bit of a hot topic with in kind of the health community right now. Like we're, we're yeah. kind of entering in an age where people are beginning to realize like, hey, life gets so oversaturated with the internet mm-hmm. and social media and our phones. And we're entering a time where it's like, wow, technology is closer to us than ever. And that's... They're saying technology is closer to us than our own family. <laughs> Sometimes. Which might be true in Sometimes some cases. Sometimes it can be, it can be that for some cases. Yeah. And but it's, just clutter. Yes. The clutter of technology. Right. And the internet. And so not just digital minimalism, because a lot of people are talking about digital minimalism. And I've heard podcasts on it love so much of the material that's out there about it but we're going to just talk about strictly our unique standpoints on how we handle it as creatives and how it can actually help you be a more creative person to minimize what i like to call information input Mm, yeah yeah so um, do you want to like kick off with some of your habits or do you want me to go ahead with some of mine? Why don't you just bounce back and forth? Let's bounce back and forth, but you okay. start. Okay. So uh, the thing that first comes to my mind for sure with in, in this topic is your morning hours, which in my opinion are like the most sacred time of day. It's when you first get up, you first wake up, you're actually, your brain like isn't even in, it's like in this sleep half awake mode i think it's like theta brain waves i'm not sure exactly on that but i know that your brain like goes into a different state when you're sleeping and then when you wake up you're like kind of in this in between state and i feel like that's a moment when a lot of people who use their phones as alarm clocks and sleep next to their phones will like reach over and grab their phone and start scrolling or looking at social media or looking at emails or looking at all the notifications that came in overnight Hopefully you put your phone on airplane mode if you put it by your head, by the way, because that's bad for you if you don't have it on airplane mode. Anyway, that's a side note. Um, So that's something that is like the biggest, first and foremost, number one thing that I do not do is I do use my phone as an alarm clock sometimes, but I always have it on airplane mode and I do not take it off of airplane mode until like usually around 12 p.m., 
usually around noon, unless I'm like doing a bunch of social media work that day, which by the way, I only do like once a week ish. <laughs> so that's another thing that I'd like to circle back to later. Um, but just keeping my phone on airplane mode for those first few sacred hours of my day and not looking at it and just like putting it in a drawer, putting it in its own home and having those few sacred hours as this is me time, this is time to reflect, to journal, to meditate, to connect with myself and with my family or whatever is your priorities and like your healthy um, self-care habits that you wish you had, even if you don't currently practice them, just things that you wish you could incorporate more into your day. It's amazing how much time accumulates and compounds that you spend looking at your phone or just scrolling or looking at Instagram or Twitter or whatever the case may be, um, where those minutes added up, those even those seconds added up, create this amazing block of time that you could have used to implement some of those healthy habits and incorporate the invite those into your life so that's time that i have and i used to be a terrible culprit of this like i before i had a phone i had an ipad this is gonna sound like really old school and weird but i used to sleep with my ipad next to but my we bed. are old school and weird <laughs> we so <are. laughs> i used to sleep with my ipad next to my bed and i was big into like social media marketing at the time trying to build my online presence and the first thing I would do when I'd wake up is reach over and grab it and go on Twitter <laughs> and like go through my notifications, like while I was still in bed, like half awake. And I used this as a method to like wake myself up because I would like kind of go back to sleep. If I I've could. never heard this story. I know. But this it's is terrible. <laughs> it like makes my body hurt to think about doing that, how I used to do this. But yeah, I used to do that. And I used to reply to all the wow. messages. And it was just, it would put me in this terrible headspace of like just feeling drained, like the minute I got out of bed. And that's just a terrible way. I learned the hard way that that's a terrible way to start my day. And so I kind of adopted that habit very seriously of, okay, if my phone's going to be there, it's going to be on airplane mode and it's not going to come off of airplane mode until I'm like actually going to use it as a tool mm. <laughs> later on, not just as a distraction or an entertainment mechanism. So I'll, I'll leave it at that and stop ranting about that point. And I, let I, you go, love, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. As a tool versus a distraction yeah. mechanism. Is that what you said? Yeah, distraction or entertainment mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, because when you think about it, it is a phone, which right. when you go back to the roots of it, boys which and girls. Which wasn't even that long ago. <laughs> which was not even that long ago. It was used as something to communicate with people, to convey information. Yeah, and unlike most more of the time an emergency was, basis. Right, <laughs> or at least for a meaningful right. conversation. Yeah. Exactly. And heck, you know, we need to get back to that bringing mindfulness to our conversations and not just talking for the sake of talking, which of course phones are still being used for meaningful conversation, but right. they've also been so used to like misused right. to become distractions for things that we shouldn't even be spending our valuable time on. Right. Like scrolling. It's almost like we take them for granted. Exactly. Like we use them so much because it's just there. It's like so convenient. Why not? Why not pick it up and just text so and so to see what they're doing right, right. now? Right. And not we don't e need to. and <laughs> half the time I feel like from the social media standpoint, it's not even to directly connect with anyone. Right. It's more to just kind of scroll through this feed of hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that yeah. you don't know personally. Now there's nothing wrong with following anyone on social media. I do. But it can reach an unhealthy level where you're just scrolling through other people's lives in this really detached way and often comparing your life to someone else's life, which then causes you to look at your life through an artificial lens that doesn't even exist for that person. When you see someone, you know, the, the picture of someone walking on the beach, sipping their coconut water. Out of an actual coconut. Yeah, out of an actual coconut. <laughs> um, you know, you see those like funny videos of like how long it took to like take that shot. And it's very 
oftentimes constructed so that's not even what it really was that's not even necessarily the real experience but you're viewing it through kind of this rose tinted lens that now you're comparing yourself through that and it just creates a really unhealthy cycle yeah so i think social media can promote that yeah which is funny because it's like you have two opposite ends of the spectrum of like it's e- that's either inspiring or it's like extremely discouraging. Mm. And so that's I think like even though somebody may be inspiring to you and they may be like posting things that are that motivate you to, you know, chase your dreams because you want the kind of lifestyle that they are currently enjoying or seeming to enjoy anyway, um, that can become almost like too much input of that like you said and it's totally okay to not look at their posts and even like unfollow them if you want to for a while if that's if you find that that's interfering with your happiness and your energy and your inspiration because like sometimes that might inspire you and sometimes you might need a break from that and that constant like looking at somebody else's story instead of writing your own story metaphorically not your actual like story if you're a writer but that too maybe (laughs) maybe literally maybe metaphorically maybe a bit of both (laughs) right because what we can often do is like get so absorbed in other people's lives to a level that has never been before been seen in history it's unnatural i know what that i know what that person across the country or across the planet is having for lunch and i know what their boyfriend looks like and i know what their dog ate for lunch and i know all like their family issues that they're it's like and I don't even know this person. Yeah, in many cases, you don't even know them. It's, right. But you know, like, everything <laughs> you that's know happening everything to them. About them. It's, it's kind of creepy. I was actually going to say that. Add that to your... It just has a general vibe of not being mindful of yeah. yourself or of other people because it's kind of making people into commodities and sources yeah. of entertainment right. rather than people yeah. who have unique lives and stories to get to know personally, yeah. to earn their friendship yeah it's just like oh well it's there for me i don't have to even interact with them i think there's something as much as social media can be used as a force for good and i am all for that and that's how i strive to use social media it can also be this really impersonal artificial environment that kind of fosters this unmindful way to look at human beings yeah and it's also like um something that you said earlier made me think of like how it's just like this massive amount of people most of us are following hundreds if not thousands of people and so it's like you see people post and they're just one of the mass they're like one person in this massive crowd of people and it's not really like personal then so now you're not even really like connecting or communicating on a personal or intimate level with this person you're just kind of like looking at a glimpse of what they're doing or what their life looks like or what they want their life to look like uh, in this massive crowd of other people doing the same thing. So it's like, I feel like the old school way of like, not like before smartphones, even before the internet, but even like the early days of the internet where you just had like email pen pals. I don't know if people even know what that is anymore, but (laughs) right, (laughs) that was like, it was more holistic and more organic and more... Uh, in some ways just more personal and better yeah. healthier healthier relationships but you know I mean there's right ways because to it's actually it. building a relationship yeah. like so there are for sure are healthy ways to build relationships online like we've met a lot of amazing people through blogging and our YouTube channels um, amazing people some yeah. of you are watching right now shout out to you um, but um, awesome people that we built friendships with and Mm -hmm. had meaningful conversations with and even met up with in person and that's awesome and that's what it's for right but then there's this other level of like just scrolling and it's this very detached and it'd be interesting to really read some science because i know it exists on how social media can be linked with like depression and anxiety and i think it has to do with the fact that we're really not meant to be detached and impersonal like this as human beings <laughs> yeah it's not healthy it's not good yeah and like what you said about blogging i feel like this is kind of a bunny trail but blogging is kind of like the way that we first got started online or in the online 
a world and on social media and stuff was mostly right. like to build our blogs and grow our platform and stuff. But we made some really cool um, connections and f- uh, made some awesome friends through blogging. And I feel like it's a really cool, uh, very meaningful way to meet people and make friends because you're like spending time, like actually reading in depth thought processes and opinions from these people who you then get to discuss it with them and go back and forth and like create this bond and this connection and this um oh what's the word like you have similarities and you have things that resonate with you so now this person is just you feel more connected with them on a deeper level versus just like liking their photos or whatever um and so i feel like there are there are still more meaningful ways to connect with people online but you can't like connect with everybody and so to like to have like hundreds and hundreds of people you can't really have a personal relationship with all of them and so the, the few people that you do end up being really close friends with you won't even need to really see them you won't even need to be like following them on social media to have that good friendship with them you know like you can follow them but like if you don't and if you're not on social media a lot you can still have a great friendship with them online or in person or whatever so it's it's not really like social media might help you meet people and make certain connections but long term it's not like a great lasting friendship bonding mechanism you know yes it can be something that sparks that but it cannot like begin and end there yeah necessarily um and and for sure like people writing messages to each other goes back to (laughs) the beginning of time (laughs) so yes that's meaningful and awesome this idea of just scrolling through photos or scrolling through posts and liking them or simply expressing your opinion on everything is kind of can create some unhealthy side effects and i think there's for sure enough science to back that up but you can use it in a really healthy way yeah depending on how you want to go about it which kind of leads me to um I, I like we got like so deep I into know, discussion we, already that sure a lot there. Um, so I don't use some of the things that I do. I agree a hundred percent with your morning routine. I never check my phone first thing in the morning unless it is um, I'm traveling and I'm expecting um, like a phone call or a message from a family member. That is the only time that I check in first thing in the morning because obviously that's you know a priority other than that on the day-to-day basis never check my phone in the morning ever um so the phone is something that's checked later in the day and i go about i don't really have so much a morning routine as i like to you mentioned having more of a slow morning routine and i i value having the slow living quiet time to uh, do spiritual seeking, spend time with family, meditate. Those things are a very important priority and I love to set the tone of my day that way by starting off with those things and not just diving into work, not diving into screens. And it, I've heard um, someone, it's a, it's a popular quote out there, I can't remember who said it, but um, like how you start your day is how you end your day. And I think it's important to like pay attention to how you set the tone of your day. Like, okay, here's the outset. How do we want to set the tone of our day? Let's look at our day as a sacred adventure that we're encountering, that we're starting out on. So let's not just head into it with like, oh, let me look at my phone and you know, like, what do you really want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to create? And you know, my goodness let's just celebrate we're alive we're breathing and let's take a moment to pause and enjoy that and be grateful for that whatever that means to you so i i'm all for no phones no computers no um electronics in the morning and having a slow mindful morning yeah i feel like also super important is the evening so like at both ends of the both ends of the day, um, I know my evening routine is super important to me, and I have internet limiting apps set up on my computer, not so much for like checking social media as much as um, 
like work related stuff, but I feel like it also falls into the, it falls into the digital minimalism category. Um, that within my, uh, my computer, I have like a, they have like a downtime thing in Mac now. That's like, you can set the certain time of day that you want to have like every app shut off and you can actually pick which apps you want to keep turned on. I always keep Scrivener and Spotify turned on because a lot of times I'll be writing if I feel inspired during um, the evening and morning hours. But I have that to shut off at, I think 6 p.m. is my current little ritual. And I I like to also call that punching out time. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. like a time that specifically every day you hold yourself to this habit. I hold myself to this habit anyway of I'm going to get off the internet at this time of day. And I feel like that translates over into so much of my life, like my mood and my energy levels and how well I sleep that night. Like all of that, it it factors into all of those things. And sleep is super important for so many reasons. Um, And I'm diving more into learning about sleep this year (laughs) anyway. um, So getting... I'm diving into just sleeping more <laughs> just this sleeping. year. Just... <laughs> well, sleeping is difficult sometimes, man. <laughs> it is. I, I, I want to learn more about it and just like get better at it. But I feel like the the getting off the internet, getting, I know like the blue, yeah. the blue light's really bad for you, but even if you yeah. wear blue light blocking glasses, which you should, by the way, even if you wear those, it's still like the... It stimulates your brain. Yeah, it stimulates and your it, brain. It screws with your ability to go to sleep. Yeah. So I feel like limiting all of that, like being super minimal and like getting off the internet completely at least a half hour before bed, but preferably like several hours. And I feel like there, there's also a trend with a lot of people and I don't say this in a judgmental way at all, but from a health standpoint, it's not great is laying in your bed, looking at your phone Mm -hmm. before sleep. Um, that really stimulates your mind. A lot of times it's not even in a positive way unless you're like, I don't know, watching inspirational videos or something. But really, it's kind of better to wind down, shut off the information input, read a book, yeah, meditate, stretch, um, have a you know quiet conversation with someone, uh, something that will help you wind down and relax. Have a cup yeah. of tea. That's something that I do all the time. Herbal tea is great for helping your uh, your body just calm down herbal teas and stuff like that so yeah i mean i could go on and on but there's lots of things and i think that like screens in bed just isn't really a good idea yeah and another thing that's like really convenient now is i think every pretty much every phone has this um is it will track your screen time and you can even go in and like see how many hours you spend in each app. So it's like, it's super helpful for if you're listening to this and you're like, I really want to get more minimal with my digital life um, and you want to limit your screen time, your phone probably already tracks your screen time. If you go into your settings somehow, just Google how your phone does it, but going into your settings and seeing your screen time and then like setting a goal for yourself of, I don't want to spend, let's say it's like seven hours a day. Let's say it's, I think that's like the average or something, five to seven hours a day, something like that. Um, I can't imagine that. Me my, either. my brain cannot. I mean, mine's like, I think 40 it minutes or something. Hurt. And it, it's like, it adds up like all the times I just look at the time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it, just looking at like how much screen time you actually have on your phone every day and then setting a goal for yourself and like doing these habits, implementing like, okay, well, I know I can cut way back on my morning hours spent on my phone if I keep my air, my phone on airplane mode until 12 noon and I will look at it you know during lunch break or whatever and then I will put it in a drawer and even if you have to have the ringer on if you're at work or school or something put it where you can't see it and just turn the ringer up so that you or you can even make settings that it will only ring if you have an actual call coming in versus text messages and just certain notifications from different apps. All of those are really good limiters to set. Yeah, I think setting limiters and having boundaries is something that's really important and healthy and something that can really promote digital minimalism. I would say my approach to digital minimalism personally is kind of an extreme approach in that I don't have any social media apps on my device at all. 
I found uh, for a while I would use social media not any excessive level but I would use it on my phone and I found that it would distract me and often just give me feelings of anxiousness to always be looking at other people's lives and and just seeing things come through my feed it was just a a very low grade thing not something I can really put into words it just it never gave me positive vibes um and yes, there are positive people on social media, but just scrolling through a feed never really provides you with like, oh, wow, I feel so, you know, pumped up and inspired now. So if there's like a person that I'm like, hey, I really like their content, I go and seek them out on like YouTube or their website and I consume their content there. Yeah. And that's another thing about like being a person's friend. Like I firmly believe in like people who inspire you being their friend but not even necessarily knowing they they don't even necessarily know that you exist but you can still be their friend as in you can consume everything they ever wrote you can listen to everything they ever recorded you can watch every video they ever made and you can virtually become their friend in this one-sided way if they're like somebody who's extremely inspiring somebody who's doing what you want to do in life they're living the dream they're living your dream and you want to emulate what they've done, the work they've put in, and the mindset that they have for their life. Um, And that's another thing about social media is that like, you can't really get all that goodness from just, you know, looking at their social posts. So if you really want to glean and learn from them, you'll go and watch their in-depth videos about whatever topic that they explore, read their books. You can even do this to people who aren't on social media because they lived hundreds of years ago. You can go and read their books. You can read everything they ever wrote. And you can like virtually surround yourself with that because another thing is that, um, I don't even know who originally said this, but it's kind of like this factoid floating around in the world that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with which i find incredibly powerful to think about and for a lot of people it's they're spending a lot of time on social media and surrounding themselves with a myriad of different people and if you're like the average of all the stuff that you're surrounding yourself with like don't just let that happen Exactly. Don't just let it happen to you of like, well, I happen to follow these people. Like, no, curate it. Like you said, like choose those people carefully because you can right. choose your friends on like not. I feel like that's a, <laughs> oh, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends, but you can choose the people that influence you. Right. So that's like, the, it's like the influencer thing. You don't know how many people you can influence choose... you without you knowing it. Wow. That's part. Say that again, because I sort of like started talking about me, but that was awesome. You don't know how many people influence you without you knowing it. That's ooh, that's good. Mm, yeah. Um. Also, elements, and that's kind of a weird word to use, but for lack of a better word, not even necessarily people you spend time with, but what you spend time doing also shapes who you are. Yeah. So if you spend time, and this is going to sound very like abstract. But if you make friends with noise and clutter, who you are will become noisy and cluttered. Hmm. Whereas if you make friends with stillness and mindfulness, quiet, that will integrate into your being as well. Yeah. And that's why it's important to notice, just notice, Um, It doesn't have to be a Herculean effort to um, just notice like, okay, yeah, when I do that thing, I start getting really anxious and I I, I get stressed out. It affects my mental state. And so I'm going to pull back from that. Make friends with stillness and, and stillness will be cultivated in your life. It might be an uncomfortable friend at first. <laughs> it might be, it might an be uncomfortable like that friend. that wiser older friend that makes you feel like you are just a little kid who doesn't know anything. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Where it's like yeah, you, you know, it's like um the distraction of social media and just the internet um can be a distraction that I think we subconsciously go to because we don't want to be quiet. Right. And we don't want to be alone. Right, and we don't want to feel like those side effects of like loneliness and silence. Right, exactly. But <laughs> and the I don't thing- want to be alone with my thoughts, so I just right. like rather distract myself. Right, but yeah. the thing, like I think too, like we can't overcome any of that until we face it and then realize yeah. that 
you know, most of the time, hey, this, you know, isn't scary. This isn't anything. Right. Um, I am safe. I am held. I am strong and I am capable of being myself and embracing myself. Yeah, you get to know yourself better for sure. Right, and, and I, was just, I was just gonna say all of that sounds also very, you know, abstract, but let it mean what it means to you. Let it be an invitation to seek. Yeah, exactly. Not to be afraid. Yeah, for sure. Um, but kind of circling back to like not having social media on my phone. So to clarify, obviously I am an author. I publish stories. I make videos. I podcast. <laughs> um, a co-host. Um, so it's important to be there and be able to share with people. And social media is a great tool and way to build community and share. So I do use social media. I am on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but I'm extremely mindful in how I go about using those tools. So when I say I don't use social media, I don't use it, um, number one, on a daily basis. Number two, I do not use it on my phone. So it's never that immediate access, access right there. Um, always in your pocket so i i do not have that i have um apps that i use to be able to be present and be able to share my art online via things like planoly is a favorite um and also scheduling and posting on facebook i don't always schedule sometimes i'm just actively there but by even the the mindful act of you know okay later this afternoon i'll um log in on my computer and check those things or answer those messages or make that video it's not something that's impulse on your phone impulse on your phone oh look there's a notification impulse on my phone um so it takes away that impulsive element and makes it something that is mindful that has to be planned and um, also removes the factor of scrolling through feeds. Like when I post on my Facebook, I just go to my page and post. When I am using Planoly, I will post on my Instagram and then I will go to the my past posts and I will answer comments on them. I won't go to the feed and just scroll through it. And I, I, I like to be mindful of what I am looking at what i'm listening to it just takes it to a whole nother level yeah. to not have it on your phone to not have the immediate yeah. gratification constantly there um or the notifications popping up that was a game changer for me and i've been doing that for probably a year and a half or so i don't even remember when it was i did it but that's an approximate and it's changed my life that's so cool. And um, what you were just saying reminded me of like calendar blocking. And like I said earlier that I like choose a day of the week that I actually like do social media work um, and like write social media posts. And I do that because partly because I like to limit it and um, have keep it minimal, but also partly because it puts you in a different mood and a different mindset when you're socially interacting with people. And for all the introverts out there, you'll relate to this. <laughs> I will, I do anyway. I feel like I only have a certain amount of energy that I want to spend on social interaction. Not that I'm like drained of energy immediately afterwards, but that I want to spend my energy in various ways and social interaction does take quite a bit of energy so i want it to be like a particular time of day on a particular day of the week usually it's wednesday because that's when my new video comes out every wednesday so i do like a promotion for that i post on all the social platforms and i talk to people and i answer comments and then i just batch work all my social work social media work into that day into that morning as well because i'm already like in the mood for that and i'm already on the websites so and what you said about like controlling it though you didn't say controlling it, but like um impulse having the impulse of having it on your phone made me think that like when it's like an impulsive thing that you like almost subconsciously do or unconsciously do it's almost like it's controlling you versus you controlling it by being like, I am going to 
open this app at this time of day or I'm going to do this then and you consciously like choosing I'm going to do this then versus it like controlling you and stealing your attention and dividing your attention and that way I just make it makes me feel more like I'm sort of I'm more in control I'm the master of my universe and I am not like ruled or my attention isn't like stolen away from other things, especially life and personal life, by social media and by apps and stuff. So I feel like I don't know if I have many social media apps. I know I have Instagram on my phone because I post directly from the Instagram app because of just weird formatting issues with videos. <laughs> if, it, if Instagram and Planoly could please fix that, that would be great. Uh, sidecar. Anyway, <laughs> but the thing that I found the most distracting for myself, even more distracting than social media, is the email app. Mm. Like, and that was something that I feel like it was like around September of last year or last summer or something. I kind of learned about myself is like, I am way more distracted. <laughs> I will open my email app on my phone like way more often than I'll open Instagram or Facebook or any of those. Wow. Like, it's so yeah. distracting to me. I'm just like, you know, who's emailing me? Blah, blah, blah. And then I realize like, I do not need to be looking at my email until I am ready to answer it because it's actually like the most unproductive thing ever to open your email and then start reading your emails. And even even worse, if they're like a long email, like if you get a long email and then you read the whole email and then you're like, oh, I, I'll, I can't reply to that right now. I'll reply to that later. And then you just like mark it as, as like I have to reply to this or unread or whatever. And then when you go back to reply to it, you don't remember what it was about. So you have to read it all over again. So you end up reading this long email twice. And then maybe the second time around, you still don't feel like replying to it. So, you know, <laughs> and so it's like this really unproductive cycle. But yeah, I found the email app super distracting. So I like removed it off my phone. Um, I think I still... I don't think I uninstalled it, but I like removed it from my home screen. So I like never go into mm. it anymore. And even just that one inconvenience of having to like slide to the different screen and like find it in all the big mess of uncategorized apps really cut down my impulse to keep opening it. And um, it kind of inadvertently made me have a better email checking habit of only checking my emails when I'm ready to answer them and doing that on more of a regulated, controlled basis. Right. And there's actually science to back that up, what you were just talking yeah. about. Because um, if you've been listening to Abby or I, um, we both are fans of Sean Aker's work. I've, I've personally mentioned him so many times on my blog because, to break down different brain science things that are associated with cre creativity and happiness and how those things are connected and his book, The Happiness Advantage, correct? Is that what it's yes. called? Awesome book. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna read a book this year that you you, you want to read something that's gonna boost your happiness and creativity, read that book because it's full of science that's just mind boggling. First of all, it's a pretty short book too. It's easy read. Yeah, yeah. it took me a while. I'm I'm still actually reading it, but um, <laughs> it's a good one to read over and over again too. Yeah, I, I listen to the audio book. You, you can read it lie. like non linearly too, because like right. it's broken into different sections of different lessons. Right, but he talks about this one experiment that he did on himself with um, trying to practice the guitar more. He decided like, oh, okay, I really have always wanted to learn the guitar or he wanted to get back into learning the guitar or something like that. And so um, he was studying how there's like this certain amount of time that's extremely small. It's like five seconds. If something takes like five seconds more effort, you're far less likely to do that. So he um, really like failed at practicing the guitar this month. And he was like, wow, why is it that I'm not doing that? And he realized he had the guitar in a closet. And he's like, wow, you know, I bet if I take the guitar and put it on a stand like in the middle of my living room, the whole experiment will go differently. And it did. And he, he did it again. And he realized like, oh, wow, just taking, cutting that back that small fraction of time that it would take him to go find the guitar, take it out of the closet and then sit down with it. 
was what was deterring him from doing that thing. Yeah. So you can use that, you can reverse that and use that to break habits that you don't want to do. Like, oh, I always check my phone. Then, you know. Make it, it inconvenient. Make it inconvenient. And he did the same thing. He Didn't he do it with the remote control? Yeah, turning on the I love that one. He took the batteries out of his remote control and put them in a drawer in his bedroom. <laughs> so he never like turned on the TV when he came home from work, practiced his guitar instead or read a book or something. Oh, right. That's and, what it was. Um, Another book that you guys should read is Atomic Habits, which probably I want to read that one. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he talks about that rule as well, because it's like one of the four laws of behavior change is making it convenient or inconvenient if you're trying to break a bad habit. I think the four laws are make it easy, make it attractive, make it obvious and make it rewarding. So the easy is also convenient. So make don't make right. it easy to get your phone. Put your phone somewhere. Right. It, or give it to a, uh, a person in your house and say, please hide this for me. Exactly. And That's don't let one. me have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a good one. Yeah. Uh, accountability. <laughs> exactly. So make it, and also the, the um, you know, logging out of the Wi-Fi, putting it on airplane mode. Yeah. Just add an extra step to make it inconvenient for you to um, indulge in, yeah. mindlessly using your device. And that's really what the screen time thing does for me too when I'm on my computer. Um, Cause my phone almost doesn't distract me as much as like just the internet in general. Like when I'm writing, you know, those, all those memes about writing that like you'll think, oh, I wonder what the origin of that word is. Or I wonder when pancakes were first invented. Or I wonder like what, what the country that first did this. And then you get off on a bunny trail online and, and later you're just like, why why did I do that? I got so distracted. So the the screen time thing really helps me with that. Sometimes I'll turn on the downtime when I'm writing because I will just like think of things and then like impulse go to Google. Oh, I want to look that up. And then like, it's not there. It's, you know, it's grayed over. You can't, it, you're on downtime. Don't, you can't do this. And I'm like, oh, yep, you're right. I'm getting distracted. And then I go back to writing and like literally I, maybe I think of like 20 different things throughout the course of my writing session that I want to look up and I can't remember any of them at the end of it. And that's not meant to sound like sad or anything. Like they were that insignificant that I didn't need to look them up. Right. <laughs> Cause if they were important, you know, they, I would have remembered, but I didn't. So exactly. And if like it most is something of the stuff important. you get distracted by is totally unimportant. Right. And you can always write it down. Yeah, yeah, that too. Write it down in an analog notebook. Oh my god, I, I used to do that. Well, not in an analog notebook, but I that was another thing I used to do. I like used to do it on the notes app, I think, on my computer. Is like when I would think of something I wanted to search on Google, I would just like type it into my notes app and then be like, when I take a break later, I'll look these things up. And at the time I really wanted to look them up, and then like later on my break or when I ended for the day, I looked at the list and I was like, eh. I'm not really interested in knowing any of those things anymore. Like literally my interest had like faded because it was like, I think it was just like my brain wanting to get distracted. Yeah. Sometimes that, <laughs> that for sure is a yeah. factor. And um, I was going to say something off of that. Sorry. Did I make you lose your thought? No, you're, you're totally good. Um, oh, not being on your device when you're creating. And that yeah. was, that's something I always do is, um, and you do it too. And we've been talking about it a bit is that when you're creating, let that be your sacred creating time. Yeah. And what that's really saying to yourself is I value myself and I'm valuing, I'm putting such value on what I'm creating that I'm not going to squander this time. Because you only have so much time in a day to be able to do what you want. And a lot of times we're, we're we live in a world that's saturated by, oh, I don't have time to do anything and I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. We have plenty of time for the things that matter to us. So let your creativity matter to you. Value yourself and what you feel you've been given to create enough to create the space to do it in. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's so good. And that makes me think of like interruptions and how like when you're when you're creating, especially when you're writing, I feel like writers are super edgy about interruptions. <laughs> but when you get interrupted, you get like so annoyed at the person interrupting you. You're like, why are you interrupting me? And you kind of have these thoughts in your mind of like, they don't respect my art. They don't respect my writing time. They don't respect my alone time. They don't respect that this is important to me. But how many times do you interrupt yourself? Mm. <laughs> How many times do you interrupt yourself with getting distracted or going on the internet or 
anything really. And that's really silently sending that message, like you said, of like, you don't really respect your writing time. You don't really respect your creative time. You don't, you're not really respecting yourself in that moment when you're letting yourself be interrupted by other things. They might not be people. They might not always be people interrupting you. You might be allowing yourself to be interrupted by other things as well. Right. Imagine like your favorite author. Like think of your favorite author and then think of your favorite story written by them. So hold that in your mind for a second. So you're thinking of that book. Um, can also be a film, film, whatever. Now imagine you're a fly on the wall when they're writing it. And if it's from long ago, let's say they had phones back then for a minute. And you're watching William Shakespeare, right? Romeo and Juliet, your favorite play or insert whatever. And he is constantly, his phone keeps buzzing and he keeps checking it every time. And he keeps getting distracted and you see him actually like get up, walk away from his desk. You'd be like, you're literally in the middle of writing Romeo and Juliet. Can't that wait? Like, can't you just, okay, (laughs) Will, you need to stop that right now. But I have to see how many people like my photo. Yeah. Of my unfinished play. Yeah. It's like, come on. You you would be so fl- flustered <laughs> because you'd be like, I know the value of that thing yeah. as the person who has loved it and consumed it after it's already been created. So now think of 20 years from now someone who has read your successful book or play or watched your successful film and now they're rewinding to this moment of you getting distracted and they're like no just just write it exactly you have to see yourself as you are that successful writer you are that successful creator Mm -hmm. so see it as the valuable thing that it's going to be and kind of tap into that reality not kind of do do tap into it and yeah. and respect it for what it truly is respect yeah. yourself for who you truly are you're a creator so give yourself that sacred time to create you can check digital stuff later yes absolutely it, it can always wait mm-hmm. <laughs> and another thing that i forgot earlier when i was talking about like screen time and stuff and um setting habits for yourself is you can actually i think most phones can do this but you can actually set time limits on certain apps so you can be like i don't want to spend more than 10 minutes a day on instagram or whatever and set that limit and the time will run out and your app will be you know unavailable after that and you won't be able to open it again And again, it's going to be more inconvenient to go fish through your settings and try to figure out how to change that setting than it will be to, um, that will be extremely inconvenient. So you won't even want to do it. (laughs) And then you just won't go into it. So it's good to set up those things and make those things, make habits easier, make habits more convenient. You know which habits you need to adopt and you know which habits are going to be the healthiest for you and improve your, your mental health, your creativity, all of those elements of your life. So Go ahead when you are objectively thinking about it, not in the moment, but when you're objectively thinking about it and go ahead and set those boundaries and make it more convenient to do the right thing for yourself and more inconvenient to do the habit that you keep getting pulled into. Exactly. And and, um, this kind of ties into what you're saying is another thing that I think like when you're kind of asking like, well, why should I do all this other than the fact you know, what we were just talking about, respecting yourself and respecting your craft, is think of a few things that you're like, you know, I've always wanted to do this, fill in the blank, but I've never had time to. The thing is, is you have time and a lot of time, a lot of the time, you are squandering time here and there on social media and all of that adds up. So imagine if you eliminated that, let's say it's the bare minimum. Let's say like Abby, it's like 40 minutes a day on your phone what could you do with 40 minutes 40 minutes a day you could learn a language i feel attacked (laughs) (laughs) so like like on uh literally so i'm learning french and i use duolingo to practice vocabulary on the go and uh, it'll have like little messages that will play in between like when it's loading another page and it will say different things and one of them is like uh 15 minutes a day can teach you a language what can 15 minutes of social media do? Oh, nothing. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely that's, that's the nothing. thing. So you have to think like, okay, if I'm sitting here scrolling through like 
friends photos or people I don't even know as photos for 10 minutes or you know on Facebook just looking at news articles what is this going to how is this going to benefit me in a positive way yeah and if it doesn't then what could I do with this valuable little piece of time I've just discovered you could learn Portuguese you could learn French you could start making a documentary you could start writing a book that book you've always been talking about that you want to write you could start planning on how you're going to be a movie producer you could literally do anything with that time it's yeah, like unbelievable. it is amazing i and another thing that made me think of is um i love uh there's a section there's a whole section in marie forleo's new book called everything is figure outable which is really good by the way there's a section where she talks about like the common limiting beliefs of people which is like i don't have time i'm i don't, I'm not smart enough and i don't have the money i think those were the top three but the i don't have time one really resonated with me and one thing that stuck out in my mind that she said was if you had to you would find the time like if you needed to if it was a life or death scenario if you were diagnosed with some really rare illness and the doctor said to you for whatever strange reason all you have to do to cure yourself and not die of this is to have two hours of uninterrupted time every day you would find that time Hmm. so it's not even that like you don't have the time it's that you're choosing to use it in other ways and so that kind of reminded me of like what you're saying about social media and how all those minutes add up and how if you needed to not do it you right. could not do it exactly so it's really it's like it's just a how how important is it to you exactly. and i feel like we were also talking about earlier um off the air discussing um how digital min- digital minimalism and limiting those things can help you to be more creative and more self-expressive and like find yes. your own voice 100 percent, be more original with your creativity because there are, there are less voices coming at you a hundred percent yeah and you were talking about how you don't um like to consume other people's content until you've made some of your own that day yeah that's something that really helps me too is that like i and i i this is different for everybody obviously but i feel like if i consume somebody else's content before i make my own content it just like it makes me less energized it makes me less creative it makes me less inspired and i just feel like kind of tired and more like drained after consuming other people's content whereas if i do it like reverse order i create my own stuff i feel good about what i've created i feel inspired and energized and then like later I might unwind by like watching a YouTube video that I really wanted to see or something that's going to benefit me in some way, whether it's being more productive or being more mindful about something or healthy living. And um, I think it's good to have things that bring you joy, but to really be mindful about like, is this just becoming a distraction or procrastination mechanism (laughs) or is it really actually bringing me like value right and like just being honest with yourself right like (laughs) is it really bringing you joy yeah like because a lot of times it's not you can be like oh this is making me happy well is it just a temporary hit of dopamine because that's not really lasting happiness right and you might get better dopamine out of like you know, playing a sport or reading a book or creating some type of music or doing something that's more creative, dancing, singing, doing something that there might not be like a tangible um, end product, end result attached to it, but it's more, it's expressing you versus just consuming other people's expressions. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it can like you kind of see it a little bit in the photography world you'll see a lot of photographers suddenly start taking like the same photo like travel photos and they all look the same and they're all of the coconut water from the actual (laughs) coconut or they're all of someone like standing this way by the eiffel tower with this type of fedora hat on and it all looks the same and what it what it kind of um and i'm not dissing photographers at all here and i and if you get inspiration from looking at other people's photos there's nothing wrong with that but i think that it can also be a bit of a downfall to constantly be looking at other people's work because then we end up sort of just kind of replicating the same thing over and over again. Whereas when we pull back from that, we're like, hey, you know, hmm, 
I'm just going to think from my own creative mind here, what would I like to capture? What would I like to write? What photo would I like to take? What song would I like to write? What film would I like to make? And we ask ourselves those questions and kind of starve ourselves of other people's content to really give our minds and hearts the time and space to figure it out ourselves. And that's where I think so much originality is born out of that place. Yeah. This is kind of like a random analogy, but reminded me of like when we were little kids, especially, and I see other little kids do this too, um, that if you don't give a little kid a bunch of like toys to play with, or now they have like iPads, oh, that's a whole other topic. Digital minimalism for your toddlers, please. But if you don't have like a bunch of toys to play with, you make up your own games and you make up your own toys and you use household objects as toys and i know we used to play with like spoons and different weird things spices that, spices and just yeah. things that were lying around the house and we used to be really imaginative and make up these games that's honestly so organic like it, it, it doesn't get much more organic than like two vermont kids like playing on the the floor with spices and spoons assigning personalities to each <laughs> especially if they're organic spices <laughs> Um, but but that's what I mean is like you make up your own games when you don't have like this pre-manufactured thing, you know? And exactly. so I feel like a lot of times things feel stale and like you're saying with photography, like you see the same thing over and over again. Things get cliche and stale and overused because there isn't enough really isolation mm. to create the originality. There isn't enough... There's too much input, so we're just like spitting out what we've eaten, but we don't ever come up with our own thing because there's like all these other standards that we feel we have to copy yeah. instead of like thinking outside the box, which makes me think that like all the masters that we learn from, <laughs> whether they're like master composers of music or poets or even like Shakespeare, made up words. <laughs> and exactly. he, he really painted outside the lines and i think that's so cool that we learn from those people and those people go down in history because they were original thinkers they were totally creative mozart started composing music i think when he was four years old and he of course was not like trying to follow by the book what other composers had written he was doing his own thing and that's what goes down in history and that's what is memorable and truly epic I agree. Exactly. That's so true. So to wind this down and recap what we've talked about, becoming minimal with your digital devices and apps and social media can help you become more creative. It can help you become more aware of your own creativity. It can kind of put a little bit of a mute on all the information input and let your mind become still and quiet enough to hear what your own inner creative voice has to say. And it can be good for your 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 health, which will in turn help you to feel more inspired when you're not dealing with any stress or anxiety generated from those things. So that's another benefit as well, for sure. Not to mention the fact you'll be sending a subliminal message to yourself that's, I respect you, I am giving you this time and space to create would you add anything yeah. else to that recap? No, that's a, that's a great recap, and I think that um, I would I think I would also add that you can do physical things. Remember to do the physical, tangible, convenient things to make your habits more convenient, more easy, more rewarding, more obvious. You can do these things. You can put these boundaries in place. Figure out what day of the week you want to. Put a little bit of time into social media growth, if that's what you're doing. If you are trying to grow your social media platform, pick a day of the week and choose those, you know, two hours or three hours or whatever of that day, you're going to work on that and limit yourself with other things. Set boundaries, set boundaries for yourself and show yourself that, like you said, that you respect yourself. You respect your time, you respect your creativity, um, use app limiters, look at your screen time and just think objectively about how you can improve it and the little tiny ways little decisions that you can make every day to improve it and put your phone on airplane mode 
as often as you can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The ones that I had, I, I didn't even have as extensive as you said, which was so well said, everything you just said. But like deleting apps off of your phone yeah. and deciding to, hey, you know what? I'm going to do it on my computer. It's probably the most extreme but rewarding measure you can take. Um, second, if you don't want to go to that extreme, shut off notifications mm-hmm. and schedule. Schedule, like you were just saying, hey, this is the time and this is the day that I'm going to do that and don't let it be an impulse thing. That will help to break the habit and um, that will cement healthier habits and a healthier relationship with social media and digitalism altogether. Yeah, I agree 100%. I'm thinking as we are recording this entire episode, I'm wondering if the people who are only listening to us, like they don't see us right now, they're just listening on Spotify or whatever. I wonder if they can tell our voices apart. Hopefully. So many people have told us on the phone and stuff that they can't tell our voices apart. So hopefully this isn't too confusing, especially when we talk over each other. It's like, yeah. who's talking now? So so definitely uh, comment below and or wherever you are, are on your platform. Send us, send us a message and uh, let us know if you knew exactly who was talking at every single moment in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be interested to know that too. Yeah, that and weird. like, so I a couple questions I have for you guys is... Um, what are some ways that you limit or help to reduce your social media time? And how do you find that that affects you, whether it's positive, negative? What are your thoughts? What are your takeaways? How do you handle it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to know that too. Yeah. So let's talk about that below. We'd love to hear what you guys think. And if you're listening on any other platform, feel free to send us a message. You can find me on my youtube channel at uh youtube.com slash kay ammons and you can find abby's writer life wednesday channel which is youtube.com slash abby emmons a b b i e and uh if you share the podcast post about it on social media (laughs) that'd be that would be very appropriate but make sure you schedule what time you're going to share this schedule it but don't you, impulse share. Yeah, don't impulse. But when you do, use the hashtag Kate and Abby show. And so that so that we'll see your post. And uh, when we do go on social media, that is. When we, when the we one day of the week media. that we go on social yeah, media. Yeah, we, we'll see your post. And, and it'll uh, make us smile. Yeah, it will, we'll appreciate it. Yeah, we'll really appreciate it. But thank you guys so much for joining us on this first yes. episode. We can't wait to hear what you think. And we're so excited to be here on this journey of wellness and creativity with you. Remember to keep believing in yourself. You're valuable. You are here to create. Mm, Dang it. Yeah. That's exciting. I'm excited. Very exciting. (laughs) Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. And we will see you in the next episode. Episode two. Can't wait. Rock on. Stay stoked.